Here's a question for you guys. Does the right side of your Ender 3 Pro X axis sag a little bit more than the left hand side? Well, if so, this dual Z axis kit by TH3D is the fix for you. So let's dive in and install this. Now what does a dual Z axis kit really do? Well, what it does is it adds a second lead screw in on the right hand side of your Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro or Ender 3 V2 and allows it to support both sides equally and uh, transfer the forces from the motor across with this belt. Now there's two ways to do a dual Z kit. You can either do it with a second motor or you can get a kit like this from TH3D which synchronizes the two rods with one belt. I went with this route because it's a little bit easier to do. Uh, if you have two motors independently running, you have an extra chance of them slipping, causing binding, and then we're right back to the issue of one side of the gantry being higher or lower than the other. With this synchronizing belt right here, that'll allow us to completely have both lead rods in sync, evenly raising and lowering the gantry. It's also gonna allow us to put more weight on the hot end if we ever choose to go direct drive in the future. So the first step is where we wanna print out two files. We're gonna first wanna print out these gantry leveling blocks that just hang from the top of the frame. And you're also gonna to wanna to print out some brackets to relocate your power supply unit. There's plenty of different ones to choose on Thingiverse. This is just one design that I like the most. First thing we're gonna to do to start is go ahead and unplug our power supply unit and then remove the two bolts on the top and bottom, holding it into the frame. We're just gonna remove it and set it to the side for now. And make sure you're supporting that as you pull it off. That way it doesn't fall. We don't wanna be hurting any wiring. And our power supply unit will just come off like that. We can remove our second bolt. The next thing we're gonna do is remove our top and bottom wheels from the right side of the frame. So to do that, I'm gonna pull off my little cover. Go ahead and grab our wrench. And our Allen key. And we can go ahead and separate them. Now that we got those two wheels off, we can take the screw on the back. There's actually two of them on the back that holds the plate onto the extrusion. I know it's hard to see on here because they're black screws and I can't get my camera positioned right, but just bear with me. Uh, if you're doing this at home, you'll be able to see it. And you're gonna wanna hold that bracket because it will fall off when we take the second screw out. And the bracket comes out just like that. Now what we need to do is remove this block nut from the top of the old bracket where the eccentric nut was so that we can bolt on this new piece and that'll kind of sandwich in there and this is what holds our new lead screw. So, so once you got that off, what you're gonna do is take one of the new bolts that is included in the kit as well as one of the spacers included in the kit. You're gonna take your old washer, your old eccentric nut, your old bearing or bearing wheel, um, or if you're putting a new one in at this time would be a good time to do that, and then your old block nut. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the stock plate, and what you want, you wanna hold it so the notch is in the bottom, and this kind of makes a curve on this side. So you want the arrow pointing to the right with the straight side on the right and the notch on the bottom. What we're gonna do is take our longer bolt that was supplied with the kit, go ahead and slide our old washer on there. We're gonna go in from the back and it should be easier to see because it'll be the side that probably has less scuffed up stuff on it, scuffed up paint, and that's from tightening in your eccentric bolt. 
Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide the eccentric nut on and you want the side that's got the little groove facing down. That's gonna sit right in the plate like that. What we're gonna do next is take our wheel, slide that on, take our spacer, slide that on, take our new TH3D dual Z plate and with it in the same exact orientation, notch at the bottom, angle, with the arrow pointing to the right, we're gonna slide that on and we're gonna screw in place our lock nut and then tighten it back down uh, until she's snug. Don't wanna go too tight. We can do that when it's actually on the printer. So hopefully this is a better view for you guys. What you're gonna want is the TH3D on the back side. We have our lock washer. We have our spacer, our wheel, our eccentric nut, and then we have our original washer with the head of the new bolt on what's going to be the front. So now what we can do is we can take our new gantry block and reinstall it back onto the x-axis and it's going to be done using the same black bolts that we took out last time and it's important that when you put these on that you don't tighten them too tight uh, we do want some room for adjustment when we get everything put together and these are going to be how you do it um, they are kind of a pain to start but just take your time with it Just snug with them. So we're gonna take our new bolt, place that in, our old spacer, slide that on, new, or sorry, old wheel, place that on, new spacer, place that on, and then what we can do is slide the bolt back just a little bit, angle this up, slide it in, Take our lock nut and just spin that on very loose for now. And we'll do the same thing with the bottom wheel. Same exact order of everything where we go bolt, old spacer, wheel, new spacer, lock nut. All right. Next thing you want to do is put both your bearing blocks on and we're just snugly putting them on. So what we're going to do now is set our gantry down on something to hold it from crashing. We're going to take off our lead screw from the right hand side, take the allen key and unscrew our bolts on the back. And this is really inconvenient filming and installing, but make it work. Now that we've got that screw loosened, we can go ahead and unthread the old lead screw out and I'm going to clean this up because it's got some grease on it. Now that we got it cleaned up we can drop it through our new lead screw. As you can see we're going to have to loosen up the block up here so that we can move it over a little bit. Next we'll take one of our GT2 pulleys and we'll just drop it down on top and I'm going to make sure that the lead screw is flush with the top of the pulley and just snug it in for now. Now that we got that in place we're going to do the same process essentially to this side where we drop the lead screw in the bearing. Once we're happy with how smooth everything feels, we can go ahead and tighten down the block 
holding that in place. And we can just bring this up and test to see how smooth it is. Go ahead and put your GT2 pulley in. Next thing we're gonna do is take our included tensioner bracket and go ahead and place that in with the uh, pulley facing forward. Go ahead and take your Allen keys and just snug that down for now. We are gonna adjust it obviously once the belt is on. I'm just gonna pull it in nice and tight so it's easy to get the belt on which what we'll do is with our teeth facing in, stretch it across these two, and then pull it back. We're gonna need to move that tensioner. And now what we can do is just nice and easily push that tensioner in, and we want it to be even. So just by looking down on it, make sure the gaps here or the spacing here is even. You don't want it crooked or cockeyed. There you go. Once it looks good, go ahead and take the right side of the Allen key and tighten it down a little bit better. So the next step is going to be to check for any Z wobble or binding, and we're going to do that by just spinning our uh, motor. And we're just gonna feel for any binding. It is gonna be a little bit tighter than before because we do have the weight of the other gantry. And we're gonna wanna go all the way up and all the way down. If you do notice excessive resistance, go ahead and loosen these blocks. And when it gets free, then you can tighten them. Once you've ensured everything's moving smoothly, there's no binding, go ahead and take a pair of calipers. And we're gonna measure how far off we are from the right to the left side. And what I like to do is taking the point with this ridge here, and what I'll do is I'll bring it down and then rest the edge of the ridge right on the top rail, and you go ahead and press that down till your point makes contact. We got 92.87, and the same thing over here. 92.81 so we're 0 0.07 millimeters off and what you're going to want to do is make sure you're within one millimeter so we're way within spec we are perfect if you're out of spec what you're going to want to do is follow the guide that luke hatfield has posted on youtube and that'll help you for squaring up your frame as well as your x gantry and it's a whole big process but it's well worth it and that's something that i did pretty much right off the bat with this printer. And I think that's one of the reasons why I'm so within spec. So if you're out of spec, go ahead and follow the X Gantry re rework by Luke Hatfield. And if you're within spec, we will go ahead and move on to the final step. Final step in the dual Z kit is going to be remounting our uh, power supply unit. You can also put on our little cover that I had printed out previously. And this obviously isn't something that's needed. It's just a little artistic touch to it. Um, but go ahead and take our brackets that we printed. Remember these guys, it's been sitting waiting. And what we'll do is I will have to take off my little uh, reinforcement, reinforcement in quotes, plate um honestly they don't need it uh, this thing's designed well enough where there's not any vibration i didn't notice any difference i did it because it looks cool uh for the color and on the other side you, know, you can see that one wasn't even <laughs> held in place um but on the other side i used it as a mount for some double-sided tape to hold a on off switch for my raspberry pi um, which I'm going to have a tutorial on how to install Raspberry Pi because I have one coming in the mail soon for the Ender 5 that we're building that I'm going to feature on this channel soon. But anyways, I'm also going to have to take off this clip here 
that I had holding in my power supply wire because I'm really big on clean wiring and this clip did not fit well. I had to like trim it and stuff and it barely slides but that's gone. We'll put that back on later. Move our power supply wire out and we'll just kind of get an idea for where this is going to sit. Just like that. I may have to extend some wires go into my bed MOSFET or at least move the bed MOSFET to make this work because th yep this mounts down low and as you can see here this mounts just in like that and two recessed bolts in there hold it onto the frame so with the magic of editing, I'm going to make that happen. Alright, so that's how you install the Dual Z kit from TH3D on your Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, or Ender 3 V2. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe.